Hello and welcome to um, a short little AWS tutorial uh, and the subject of this tutorial is how to uh, host uh, HTML or flat websites or static content uh, in EC2. Uh, the easiest way to do it, the most efficient way to do it, the quickest way to do it. Now most people when you mention this um, would immediately say oh well the, the or, to host a website in EC2, uh, in AWS, is to get an EC2 instance up and running, put Apache or Nginx on it, uh, and upload your content and serve it like that. But it's certainly not the cheapest way to do it, and so it's not the easiest way to do it. Uh, I believe this is the easiest way to do it, and that is to utilize the an S3 bucket, or rather two S3 buckets in this case. Now, for those of you who don't know, S3 is the uh, AWS's mass storage um, a service. So you can put lots of um, static content on there, HTML files, um, images, PDFs, and um, it has a hugely great uh, uptime um, on it, uh, and it's very reliable. Uh, but it can, also, it can also host a website. If you've got a static website, this is the way to go forward, I think. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take you through um, how to do this uh, using the console. And after um, I do it in the console, I will also do it in um, uh, CloudFormation template. And I'll make that CloudFormation template upload um, available in a GitHub repository, um, uh, which I'll put a link to at the bottom of the screen. OK, so to start off with, um, the way we're going to do it is we're going to register a domain. Now, we want to point a domain to a website, and we're going to point this domain to S3 Bucket and serve the website from there. So I've already um, taken the liberty to register a domain. So if we go to Route 53, uh, which is the AWS uh, DNS service, uh, you'll see there's a, there's a domain in here, which I've already created. There's a, there's a couple in here. One is palindrome.co.uk, which is my, my, uh, my normal domain. Uh, but I've, I've registered one called AWS Tutorial. Dot cloud and um, in there it's just a basic zone file at the moment I've got no records in but I've already registered all that and that's been up for a while so that will have propagated around the world all the name servers around the world so what I want to do is now is start actually going forward with this and start actually creating some s3 buckets now in order for this to happen uh, I need two s3 buckets because I'm going to use the domain AWS tutorial.cloud and I want a website to uh, appear on the Apex record. So I wanted to you to type in HTTP um, AWS tutorial.cloud and it to appear. And I also wanted to appear when you type in HTTP www.aws uh, tutorial.cloud. Now, the way you do that is you create two buckets, one for the Apex uh, and one for the uh, subdomain of www, but you only put the content in one. You only put the content in the root domain um, S3 bucket. So we'll go through it, and hopefully it will become a bit clearer. OK, so um, let me just adjust uh, my microphone so you can all he hopefully hear me a bit clearer. OK, um, so we're going to start off with going to S3. Um, I've got it here as a, a pinned item up at the top, but you can go through it from the main console menu. And um, you'll see that there, there are some S3 buckets already in here. This is stuff that I use generally uh, for other projects. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create the two buckets, um, one for the root domain of AWS tutorial.cloud, one for the domain, the subdomain of www.aws tutorial.cloud. Now, one thing I should make it absolutely clear with S3 naming, um, S3 has to have a name. Each S3 bucket has to have a name which is unique within the S3 uh, space in AWS. Not just your region, not just your availability zone or region or it has to be unique throughout the whole of AWS. So, so naming your your um, S3 bucket is very important. Um, it has to be unique. So the fact that we're naming it after a domain makes it the chances of it being unique um, much higher because we own the domain and um, 
creating something with a, a domain at the start that you own, the chances of it of somebody using that is 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 slim. It's not it's not impossible, but it's slim. So hopefully we'll go ahead and um, and do it, and we shouldn't have any problems. So it's dead easy. So if you go to the blue button for the create bucket, start with the create bucket. Now it's asking for you a region and a bucket name. Now I've already got this in a text editor here, just so you can see this. So the first one we're going to do is the uh, the root domain of AWS Tutorial Cloud. We want to put it in the island region because uh, I'm in the UK and that's the nearest one for us. Well, it's not actually, we've got one in London now, but um, that's the, the cheapest one uh, local to me. Uh, I want to set up logging. Now you don't have to do this now, but obviously I think it's it's quite useful if you want to um, log um, access to your website. So you can do it now or you can do it later. So we'll do it now. You click in and enable, you choose a bucket. Now I've already got a, 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 um, a bucket here for logs, Pandome logs. And the target prefix, well, I don't want to use that. What I'm going to do for the target prefix, because it's already a logs bucket. So I'm just going to use that uh, to, in a way to differentiate the traffic from both um, domains. And then I'm just going to create it. And um, there is the, the first one up here is the new one that we've just created called AWS Tutorial.Cloud. And I'm going to do the same thing again, but using the subdomain of www, which I've already have here, create another bucket, put it in here, deep it at Ireland. Um, I'm going to use EU West 1. And I'm going to choose the same bucket for logs, that one. And I'm going to use the same uh, prefix of the uh, subdomain in this case, and then just click create. And what you'll see um, is now there is the two buckets, the one bucket there at the end and the one bucket at the start. They're the two buckets that we're going to use for this um, process. Okay, so now we've got the two buckets that we need created. We're going to go to the stage of uploading the content. Now I've got two files, uh, very basic files. One's an index file, which just has a basic um, kind of hello world message. And the other one is an error file, which will get displayed if, um, for instance, you go to a page that doesn't exist, like a 404, that error message will get displayed. So we've got those two bits of content. Now we don't, although we have two buckets, we only need to um, we only need to put them put the content into the um, the root bucket. Uh, the other one will be used as a redirect to that root bucket and serve uh, traffic that goes that's looking at www dot. Um, but the traffic is the the content is the same. It's not duplicated in any way. It's just in one place, and that's the place where you will uh, upload and edit and delete data from. So it's the AWS Tutorial Cloud bucket that we're going to upload traffic to. Traffic. We're going to upload content to. What you need to do is uh, click on properties, just so we know where we are. Uh, click on the AWS Cloud. And then go to actions and you will see an upload button. So that upload button there allows us to drag and drop files, but we, we don't have to drag and drop files. We can just add files here. So we're going to go to these files, which we've already created. Uh, there's an error file and an index file. We're going to click open and they appear on the screen here. And then we just need to click the start upload button and they'll be transferred up to the bucket. Now, once that's done, it's done here, you get the little green tick. Uh, that That is essentially uh, all done. And we can actually go and uh, see what's being served by immediately going to the properties file here and, and working out um, the next bit, which is to set uh, this bucket uh, for static website hosting. OK, so we're at the stage now we have two buckets. We have um, the data that we want to serve the website in one of the buckets, in the root bucket. But now we're at the stage where we need to make that bucket available for uh, the public to see, because uh, by default, it'll, it's a private bucket. You won't be allowed to um, get data from it. Um, so we need to uh, create a policy 
that we can put on that bucket and we need to make sure that it's actually set to uh, serve web pages. Okay, so the first the first thing is here, if you go into the properties, you'll see a long list of um, different properties here. Um, some of them in this case, for this purpose, we don't need to touch. Um, but we do need to touch this static web hosting. Um, by default, it's set to do not enable web hosting, but obviously we want it to be a web hosted site. So um, we need to set that. Then it says, um, it gives us an option, two fields, to put in an index document and an error document. Well, um, I've actually called the index document index.html and the error document error.html. We don't need any other rules or anything in this section, so we'll just save it. Okay, but what we need to do as well now is, so that's told it that make the bucket able to serve pages and serve static content. But we also need to change the permissions because by default, like I said, it's a private document, it's a private bucket. The only people who have access to it is, is my account. But we want to make it uh, public, uh, publicly available. So what we need to do is, is put this little policy on. Now I've already got it here and I'll explain what it is when I've added it. So we added in bucket policy and then we need to create it here. So what it's actually saying is we're allowing um, for the purposes of uh, an S3 get object. So a get object is essentially, uh, in this case, it's viewing the content. Uh, and we're, we've, we've, set, we've set the resource a very specific um, AWS tutorial.cloud and on a wildcard, so anything below that. So we're saying in this bucket, AWS tutorial.cloud and anything below that should be uh, available for an S3 get object, okay? Uh, and we're and we're allowing this for everyone, so we can save that now. Okay, so at this stage, we have two buckets. We have content in one of the buckets. We have told that bucket to be available as a web server, and we've told it to be available to the public at large. Now, at this stage, we can actually see the content via the web server. So if we go back under here you'll see there's an endpoint here. Now this endpoint is in fact um, a publicly available endpoint that we can click on and in the browser we should see the content that we've uploaded. And there you go, that's the, uh, the index.html file. Uh, simple page, this is a test website available at awstutorial.cloud and www.awstutorial.cloud. Very simple, but it proves that it actually works. Now, obviously this URL here is a bit unwieldy and that's what we're going to resolve by uh, registering our own domain and pointing it to this site. Okay, now we're down to the penultimate stage before we uh, concentrate on getting the DNS pointing to the buckets. And this is uh, concentrating on the second bucket, which we've never done much with now. So if we go back to the S3 management console, I'll talk you through what we have to do to get this working. And it's not much because it doesn't really do a lot. It's re really there as a redirect to the primary bucket. So we highlight, uh, we've been concentrating on this one, which is the AWS tutorial.cloud, which has the content in. If we go back, we need to concentrate on this now, the www.aws.cloud. If we highlight it here and we go to properties, all we have to do here is go to the static website hosting and instead of enabling website hosting, which we did on the primary, we need to redirect all requests to another host name. And that host name is AWS tutorial.cloud. What it will do is it will, once we've got the DNS up, that will resolve to the initial bucket. Uh, and that's all we need to do. You can put fully qualified names in there. You can redirect them to a completely different website, but that's what we want to do for this. So all we have to do is save that. And now it's on to the DNS. Right, so from this page, we now need to go back to route 53 to set up the DNS. Now, there will be some propagation time included in this, so I'll, um, I'll uh, use um, the facility of um, uh, filmmaking to stop this and pause it so everything kind of works um, very quickly. For you, it, will, it, it might be a while before it works for me. So we're going to the AWS tutorial.cloud domain and we need to put two A records in here and they're alias A records. 
So the first one we do is quite simple. The, um, the apex record, which is the essentially the top level domain here. The, sorry, the top level domain, I shouldn't use that word. But it's the, it's the, it's the root domain, the domain without any subdomain. Uh, and then we use alias. And then we choose the uh, S3 endpoint. And that should uh, propagate in here. There you go. That's the S3 bucket that we're going to, to uh, point it to. And then we need to create another alias record. But this time it's for www. Uh, again, it's an alias. Again, it's the S3 bucket that we're, we're pointing to. And create that. And that's as simple as it is. Um, once that propagates, that change is propagated around all the name servers around the world, you'll see um, the same content at awstutorial.cloud and www.awstutorial.cloud, and yet it'll only be in one place and it'll be all served from an S3 bucket, no web server involved. So I'll pause it now and we'll come back to it when this is all working. Okay, so. Um, by the magic of video editing, um, we are back and uh, the DNS propagation has happened. It's gone all around the world. So I can now prove to you that what we've done has now worked. So if I open another tab, I can type in AWS cloud tutorial, uh, AWS tutorial.cloud and you'll see the content. And equally, I can show you www.awstutorial.cloud and it redirects to that website. So I've done all that without any Apache or Nginx or an EC2 instance, purely done with a DNS and an S or a couple of S3 buckets. So just to end this little quick tutorial, uh, I'm going to go through with what we've actually done today. So we started off that we had an existing domain in route 53. And, we, and that, was, that domain was called um, awstutorial.cloud. It started off as a basic uh, zone file with no records in it at all. Then we went into S3 and we created two buckets. We created the, the, the root bucket, which is awstutorial.cloud, and the redirect bucket, www.awstutorial.cloud. In the root bucket, we uploaded two files, one an error file and one an index file. We set up the properties so that it had permissions. We Remember we, we added a, a bucket policy. It had permissions so the public could view it and we set it up as a web server so we enabled website hosting. In the other um, redirect bucket, we there was no content in there but we did go back in to, and tell it to redirect all requests to the primary bucket. And then to finish off, we went back into route 53 and created um, two A records, alias A records. The first for the Apex record and the second for www. And that is how you simply, easily and um, reliably do a very quick website hosting facility without costing the earth in AWS. Now, like I said before, I've done it all through the console here. Now, I normally wouldn't do it like this. I would do it through a CloudFormation template. Uh, so I've got a CloudFormation template which does all of this. I'll put a link to the GitHub repository in the um, notes at the bottom of this video. Um, and if you want any more, um, if you like this, if you want any more of these type of little tutorial videos, um, put some comments after uh, after this uh, video uh, and subscribe and uh, I'll I'll get around to doing some more. Thank you very much for watching.